You may not consider yourself a forager, but if you need a place to start, I would encourage you to just step out your front door. Welcome to my front yard, where there are so many different plants that have exceptional edible qualities and medicinal properties. Today, I wanna to just introduce you to just one of them. So stay tuned while I introduce to you the plantain. I'm very thankful for a strange little phenomenon that happened this week in my yard. The wonderful gentleman that comes and mows every couple of weeks happened to not be able to get into this one little narrow spot. So everything that wanted to grow actually had a chance. And one of the one, most wonderful things is this great plantain uh, plant. Someone would call it a weed, but I'm gonna say it's just a plant. This thing is wonderful. I want you to look closely at it because every part of this is edible. This happens to be the narrow leaf plantain and you may be familiar with it in your state in more of a wide leaf plantain. It looks a little different according to where it grows but it's almost in every state of the union. It has every part of it edible. So the flowers, the stems, the leaves and even the roots. I'll start at the roots and just tell you, they can be dried and roasted and ground up in the coffee grinder and used in tea as a medicinal tea. It helps with bronchitis and as an expectorant. The leaves can be harvested early in the spring when they're really small, they're very tender and just perfect for eating raw, like a salad. But as they grow bigger, like you see here, this is kind of a mature plant. Um, in the late spring, it can be used just like collard greens or the way that you would cook spinach and use it. It's wonderful. Um, the flowers on it taste a lot like peanuts, sort of like a little bit like rotten peanuts. So they're wonderful for nutrition and if you're stranded in the wild, I encourage you to eat them, but they might not be your favorite part of the plant. The leaves can be harvested and made into different kinds of teas that are excellent, like I said, for bronchitis or for an expectorant. But also this is known kind of as a snake bite remedy from the olden days. Like if you were out in the wild and you needed quickly to remedy any kind of skin lesion, if you got a bee sting or a snake bite or a really bad little spider bite out in the woods, if you can find a plantain, what you're gonna want to do is just take some of it and you can e either chew it up in your mouth, that's what they mostly did, or you can just grind it up real fine in your, in your uh, hand until it makes kind of a little poultice of sorts. You wanna get that juice coming out of it, and then you just wanna put it right there on whatever that lesion is. And best if you put some sort of a little cloth around it so it holds it tight, but it's notorious for pulling out the, the bad stuff and keeping the good in. This has antibacterial properties that are going to help um, cleanse that wound and um, help you until you're able to get professional medical help. Now, do some research on this because you're gonna be excited about all of the different vitamins that are in this plant and the antimicrobial and antibacterial properties. But take my word for it, you do want to make sure you know how to identify any plant when you're out there foraging. Don't say, hey, that girl on the video told me so. Learn your plants very well so that you know how to identify them and also in the event that you are in any kind of need of medical help, seek a professional because just plants alone are probably not the only route you should take if you have any access to a doctor. Anyway, go out into your, your yard, see if you can't find some of these wonderful plantains that God made for eating and for medicinal purposes. I think you won't be disappointed and you're gonna love what you see out there because I think you probably have some growing in your yard right now. So while I eat mine, I want you to take time to like, share, and comment on this video. Let us know what you eat out of your front yard and we'll see you on the next video. Hey, before you go, I want to share with you a beautiful verse out of the book of Matthew. It's the first book in the New Testament, and it's the very last verse of chapter 6. It says this, Therefore, don't be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Now go spread the word.